वेलकम टू पार्ट हिस्ट्री यूट्यूब चैनल सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल फॉर रेगुलर नोटिफिकेशन एंड फॉलो आवर ऑफिशियल फेसबुक पेज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट नोमैटिक पैस्टोरलिज्म नोमैटिक पैस्टोरलिज्म इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ पैस्टोरलिज्म वेन लाइफ स्टॉक आर हर्डेड इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड फ्रेश पैस्टर्स ऑन हुईच टू ग्रेस Strictly speaking, true nomads follow an irregular pattern of movement in contrast with transhumans where seasonal pastures are fixed. However, this distinction is often not observed and the term nomad used for both. In historical cases, the regularity of movements is often unknown in any case. The herded livestock include cattle, yaks, sheep, goats, reindeer, horses, donkeys or camels. Nomadic pastoralism is commonly practiced in regions with little arable land, typically in the developing world, especially in the steppe lands north of the agricultural zone of Eurasia. Different causes have been identified which include overgrazing, mining, agricultural reclamation, pests and rodents, soil properties, tectonic activity and climate change. Simultaneously, it is mentioned that some such as overgrazing and overstocking may be overstated while others such as climate change mining and agricultural reclamation may be underreported in this context there is also uncertainty as to the long term effect of human behavior on the grassland as compared to non biotic factors nomadic pastoralism was a result of the neolithic revolution to watch video on neolithic revolution in our channel click on the link at the top right corner during the revolution humans began domesticating animals and plants for food and started forming settlements nomadism generally has existed in symbiosis with such settled cultures trading animal products like meat hides wool cheeses and other animal products for manufactured items not produced by the nomadic herders Henry Flake tentatively suggested the Shefford Neolithic industry of Lebanon may date to the Epipaleolithic and that it may have been used by one of the first cultures of nomadic shepherds in the Bekka Valley Andrew Sherrod demonstrates that early farming populations used livestock mainly for meat and those other applications were explored as agriculturalists adapted to new conditions especially in the semi arid zone now we can divide our discussion into two parts scholastic discussions on nomadism and nomadic pastoralism the first question is very important what was the relationship between pastoral nomadic tribes and sedentary peoples after decades of research scholars are more aware than ever of the challenges posed by this deceptively simple question although the attitude of early mesopotamian states was overwhelmingly negative toward tribal groups their textual record often hints that mobile populations played an important role in the rise and fall of early states in late antiquity and the islamic period despite the fact that nomads made up a relatively small portion of near eastern society their impact on the social and political trajectory of near eastern history was substantial the conflicting evidence of near eastern nomadism makes it exceptionally difficult to describe the complex socio-political relationship between nomadic and sedentary peoples textual biases that are a product of 
the urban setting in which the ancient sources were composed are only one source of difficulty for the modern researchers. Problematic ethnographic parallels and the generally poor archaeological preservation of the remains of mobile peoples present additional challenges to the study of ancient nomadism. Texts that touch on nomads were composed by urban elite whose wealth and power were rooted in their control over agricultural resources and labor. The fundamentally negative attitude toward nomads was maintained over centuries and worked its way into scholarship well into the 20th century. By the 1950s, researchers continued to assume that the primary role of nomads throughout history was as agents of destabilization. By the 1960s, it had become clear that despite intermittent antagonism, farmers and mobile pastoralists in fact participate in a symbiotic relationship. Furthermore, communities alternate between nomadism and sedentism depending in part on the strength of the central authority. In the 1970s, Mikhail B. Routon used the terms enclosed nomadism and demorphic chiefdom to describe the type of social organization characteristic of ancient Murray which represents a curious blend of city-state, tribe and nomadism. This broader understanding of nomadic adaptations to sedentary society was applied in the following years by archaeologists, assyriologists and historians to the study of origins of specialized pastoral nomadism, the Amorites at Murray and in the Levant, Aramins of the late second millennium and later pre-Islamic periods. The 1970s and 1980s saw the emergence of a more integrated view of nomadic and sedentary encounters in the ancient world. It was not until the past two decades that archaeologists have challenged the view that pastoral nomadic remains were unrecoverable. Ethno-archaeological studies show that nomads do indeed leave behind distinct traces based on domestic patterns that are both unique to a nomadic lifestyle and relatively universal among nomads of different tribes. Pastoral nomadic sites have been identified and excavated in the Levant, especially in areas where vegetation and erosion are unlikely to affect the visibility of archaeological sites. There, pastoral nomadic sites are identified based on their location outside the zone of agriculture and absence of grains or grain processing equipment limited and characteristic architecture, a predominance of sheep and goat bones, and ethnographic analogy. The pottery assemblage of those sites may also reflect a pastoral nomadic lifestyle. Outside of the Levant, evidence of early specialized pastoralism has appeared in the valleys of the ragged landscape of Khujestan of southwest Iran. However, in the Mesopotamian plain and in the cultivated fields of rain-fed Upper Mesopotamia, alluvision, vegetation and erosion reduce archaeological visibility to a much greater degree, which makes it difficult to identify pastoral nomadic sites. Nevertheless, it may be possible to identify the effects of pastoral nomadism on settlement patterns. Recently, scholars of both texts and archaeology have moved away from Routon's demorphic chiefdom and towards an acknowledgement of an even greater integration between urban and pastoral sectors. Although this approach appears to capture more accurately the complexity of ancient tribe-state interactions, it also introduces questions about the very categories 
we use to describe pastoral nomadic tribes. The term tribe itself and many of the attributes associated with it such as segmentary lineages and egalitarianism have troubled anthropologists for some time. As the division between the tribe and state in antiquity continues to blur, we may seem hyper aware of the inadequacy of terms such as nomad, pastoralist, tribe or Bedouin. The use of these may also be problematic because they tend to create dichotomies between tribe and state or nomad and sedentary that may not represent ancient realities. Additional complications arise from the fact that despite calls for the integration of archaeology, anthropology and history in the study of ancient pastoral nomadism, each discipline has been addressing these issues in relative isolation. Jaris Jarins has proposed that pastoral nomadism began as a cultural lifestyle in the wake of 6200 BCE climatic crisis when Harifian pottery making hunter gatherers in the Sinai fused with pre-pottery Neolithic B agriculturalists to produce the Munhata culture, a nomadic lifestyle based on animal domestication, developing into the Yermukian and thence into a circum Arabian nomadic pastoral complex and spreading proto-Semitic languages. In Bronze Age Central Asia, Nomadic populations are associated with the earliest transmissions of millet and wheat grains through the region that eventually became central for the Silk Road. Often, traditional nomadic groups settle into a regular seasonal pattern of transhumance. An example of a normal nomadic cycle in the Northern Hemisphere is spring early April to the end of June, transition, summer, end of June to late September, a higher plateau, autumn, mid-September to end of November, transition, winter, from December to the end of March, desert plains. The movements in this example are about 180 to 200 kilometers. Camps are established in the same place each year. Often semi-permanent shelters are built in at least one place on this migration route. In sub-regions such as Chad, the nomadic pastoralist cycle is as follows. In the rainy season, the groups live in a village intended for a comfortable stay. The villages are often made of sturdy material as clay. Old men and women remain in this village when the other people move the herds in the dry season. In the dry season, the people move their herds to southern villages with a more temporary character. They then move inland where they stay in tent camps. In Chad, the sturdy villages are called Hille. The less sturdy villages are called Denkhout and the tents Ferik. Around the middle of the 4th century CE, there was a series of tribal movements which had their origin in developments in Central Asia. The Central Asian grasslands which extend from southern Russia in the west to the Gobi Desert in the east had for long been the homeland of numerous tribes which engaged in specialized nomadic pastoralism. Perry Anderson has characterized nomadic pastoralism as a distinct mode of production with its own dynamic limits and contradictions that should not be confused with those of earlier tribal or feudal agriculture. This mode of production suited in semi-arid environment of Central Asia. It represented 
a higher level of development than primitive subsistence agriculture. The highly specialized strategy of nomadic pastoralism was capable of producing a surplus. Surplus production promoted class differentiation. Tribal chieftains presided over a relatively simple state apparatus which included warriors and heads of powerful clans. The search for good pastures was an important consideration for these nomadic tribes. Given the comparative poor soil of region inhabited by them, they were always in need of extensive stretches of land to provide for their animals. The larger the tribes and the more successful it was at rearing its livestock, the greater would be its pressure for pastures. This implied conflicts with neighboring tribes who subsisted on nomadic pastoralism. The conflict might lead to subjugation of one tribe by another and payment of tribute to the dominant tribe or an alliance which would culminate in a powerful confederacy. Nomadic pastoralists did not live in isolation but had intimate exchange relationships with the advanced agrarian societies on whose margins they dwelt. Meat, dairy produce, hides, wool, fur, cattle and horses were exchanged for diverse commodities which advanced agrarian economies could offer. Trade was combined with raiding expeditions into territories of settled societies. Both increased the disparities of wealth in the nomadic societies. It became possible for some of the tribal chiefs to maintain full-fledged professional armed contingents. The inbuilt mobility of the nomadic troops, their familiarity with difficult terrain, their simple needs and their special skills as horsemen and archers often gave them a great advantage while conducting swift military campaigns. These developments produced a number of short-lived episodes in history in which some nomadic tribes succeeded in conquering large territories. However, nomadic societies had some serious drawbacks as for instance complete lack of urbanization and low levels of technology which made it difficult for them to progress to higher stages. So even in present day they are following almost same lifestyle. It is a journey without an end. So this is the end of our today's discussion. Please subscribe our channel for regular notification and follow our official Facebook page. For any query you can mail us for details. See the description.